All right, guys, can we be transparent for a minute? Can we be a little vulnerable? You guys have seen me turn closets into pantries. You've seen me build furniture. You've seen me do shower renovations. You've seen me do a lot. What you haven't seen me do is spend time working on our front entryway. Our curb appeal, I'm ashamed to say, is abysmal. So we're gonna do something to improve that. So this is the front of our house. Landscapes overgrown entryway doors in this tiny little alcove and it's an ugly color and we get no sunlight the two little windows up there do absolutely nothing to help us and it's time we update this situation this will be the first situation we're fixing on the front of our house i sincerely apologize to my neighbors we will do better in the future but first things first let's take care of this door and that is where the sponsor of this video comes in All right guys, let me tell you about my awesome friends over at Zapatat. I told them about the issue we were having with their entryway and the lack of lighting and they had the perfect solution. Zapatat makes custom door inserts, that way you don't have to replace your entire door which can be very costly. They make a ton of different styles, decorative ones, ones with blinds, ones without blinds. We opted for this three by five pane window with blinds included. That way we could have a ton of daylight but we could also close the blinds at nighttime for a little bit of privacy. This insert is super easy to install. It's a little intimidating, but honestly, not difficult at all. All of these products are super high quality, and I can't wait to show you how well this project came together. Let's get to work. Okay, we're gonna start by taking out the front door. Most front doors all function the exact same. When you open them, you have three hinges. Boom, boom, boom. They can be undone with your regular Phillips head screw. So let's do that. I'm gonna be myself. Make sure you hold on to all your screws. We're obviously going to need these later. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just now, once I had the door detached, I wanted to make sure that the entryway that was just gonna be exposed for the next handful of hours didn't get a ton of bugs or other critters going through. So I swept everything out and then just sprayed a little bit of bug repellent around this area just a little bit of preventative maintenance to make sure that we don't have any creepy crawlers making it into our entryway. Now, because we're opting to paint our door and hardware, the first step I needed to do was remove the hardware. Most door hardware works in the exact same fashion. Once you remove the side screws, you can see that the two inside pieces have a decorative cover plate. The doorknob one pops off when you slide that lever, that exposes the base plate. The base plate has two through screws that go to the other side and hold the handle in place. Now once you remove that, you can take the locking mechanism out and move on to the deadbolt. Now the deadbolt behind the knob has a very tiny set screw. Once you get that done, which is a little bit of a challenge because it's so small, but once you get that loosened, the knob will fall off and you can pull the lock and other mechanisms out the same way you did with the doorknob. Now keep these all in order and don't move them because this can be a real challenge to get back into place. Moving on, the next step would be to remove the existing inserts we have in our door. These are two tiny windows at the top of the door that provide practically no light whatsoever. I packed out the screws, scored the caulk line, and then used a putty knife to clean up all those caulk lines. And just like that, we are on to the main event, which is cutting the hole in our door. I'm using blue painter's tape here to mark out all of my cut lines, double and triple checking to make sure that they are the measurements they need to be for my specific insert. Honestly, this part had me really nervous, so I distracted myself by getting the hardware prepped. Now to get the hardware prepped, all I did was scuff it up with 150 grit sandpaper just to make sure that there was a nice rough surface for the paint to adhere to. I'm using an exterior rated metallic aluminum spray paint and I was honestly stunned at the difference this made in the hardware. New hardware can run anywhere from 50 to over $100 and this spray paint was like eight bucks. So super excited with how this came together and how well it looks on the new door. But now that that's done, we kind of got to cut the door. All right, so we're kind of at the big, this is the big moment. Uh, Zapatat recommends using a jigsaw to cut halfway through your door. Don't go all the way through. That's where you get chip out, things get really ugly, and it's probably a little bit too much for this jigsaw to handle. Uh, that being said, I think this is just because it's a very approachable tool for most people. It's very easy to get your hands on. I, however, have a track saw. Um, which is gonna do a much better job of cutting a straight line. I can set the depth to exactly what I need it to be, and I can ride the track and really eliminate a lot of the human air that could develop with a jigsaw. Jigsaws tend to wander, 
So I'm gonna use the drag saw. Pretty nervous about making this cut. I don't wanna have to go buy another door after this. So wish me luck. Don't wish me luck. Just pray for me right, right now. Just pause the video, take a quick moment. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. Let's get to work. Now, an important note here, I am using my track saw. You do not have to use a track saw. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But even with a track saw or a circular saw, you'll still need a jigsaw in order to square up your corners because the saws have rounded blades. They're gonna leave a rounded edge, which will cut further into your door than you actually need it to go. And in some cases not cut far enough. So the jigsaw is essential. You will need to square up those corners, which I'll talk about here in a minute. are cut through. Now again, we cut only halfway on each side, flipped it all over, cut the other half of the way through, taking a total of, I think like eight passes, but all the lines are really straight and I'm really happy with that. Now, because my door already had two windows at the top, I don't need to take the jigsaw and square up these corners. They're already squared and they're already open. At the bottom, because I don't have windows down here, because who has windows at the bottom of their door, I do need to take the jigsaw, drop it in my cut that's already existing and connect the corners to make it a nice clean connect. Now, again, if you don't have a track saw or if you don't even have a circular saw, a jigsaw is a great option. I would advise clamping some kind of straight edge that way it keeps you from wandering because jigsaws just tend to go on their own. Uh, but it's, it's definitely doable with this tool. Don't be intimidated. All you would need to do is drill a 3 8 inch or a half inch size hole in each of your four corners, drop your jigsaw in and connect the dots. Not very hard. Don't feel intimidated. Definitely doable without a track saw. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna connect our corners, and then we're gonna take our insert and see how everything fits together. Now, sorry to interrupt the fit montage, but I did want to point out, I got it on there and I wanted to check the blinds because this insert has blinds. I was really excited about it and the blinds weren't working. And I began to panic like, oh no, did I break it? Did something happen during shipping? And it turns out that the top blind just got jammed during shipping. As soon as I got that loose, the blinds functioned beautifully. Now, moving on, we can look at getting our front door painted. One of the tricks I like to use with my HVLP sprayer is just filling the container with a gallon bag first and then putting the paint inside the gallon bag as opposed to in the container itself. That makes cleanup a lot easier. You just take the bag out, add hot water and soap and spray it through your gun and your gun's clean and ready for the next job. Now, in order to get the door to stand up straight, I attached a couple pieces of scrap two by material to the bottom of the door to serve as feet, then got the door moved out to my front yard. That way I could work on getting three coats of paint on. Now, just to be clear, you definitely don't have to have an HVLP sprayer. You could roll or brush on your paint if you decide to paint your door. This just makes it a little bit faster on the painting process, though you do lose time during setup with all the tape and the plastic. So kind of pick your poison here on what works best for you. We also decided to paint the trim of our door. That way it was one complete new looking package. Again, a lot of setup time here, but the outcome came together pretty nicely. Okay, so the door is painted. The trim is painted. Now we need to get the insert permanently attached to the door and get the hardware back on so we can get the door back on the house. This is kind of a one day project for obvious reasons. So be sure to start early in the morning. Let's grab that insert. Okay. Inserts here. Now the instructions say to put the insert down and lay the door over top of it and then attach the top part of the insert to close it all together. So I'm gonna go grab the door and we'll get to this next stage. Yeah. 
So I should have done this in reverse, but I was a little worried about the paint job since it's not totally cured yet. Uh, so now I need to lift it up and I'm gonna use the included screws to go from the inside of the door into the outside part of the insert. So let's do that. Actually, no, I'm gonna back this out. I'm gonna flip everything upside down. That way I'm not fighting gravity the whole time. So whatever way you're gonna set it, the inside of the insert has holes for your screws to go to and just make sure the inside of the door is facing up, the outside of the door is facing down when you lay down your insert. It'll save you a headache. So a little bit of movie magic. We're gonna go ahead and change this like this. So the outside, the exterior of the door is down. Make sure you have your insert oriented the right way. For me, it's a little bit easier to tell because I have a switch for the inside. That way we can lower the blinds up and down. So now we have the trim, the insert, the door, and then the exterior trim, or I guess what would be the interior trim, but it's on the top. You know what I'm saying. So now we can take the included screws and we can start securing this in place. Okay, now that that's done, we can start back in on our hardware. Now, those of you still curious about the title of the video and the thumbnail, like, oh man, what was so hard about this? What did you wish you knew before? And what I wish I had known is cutting the door insert was actually the easiest part of this project. Sure, it was intimidating because that's a scary thing to do, but it wasn't complicated. Getting the hardware back in place was far and away the most difficult part of this project because there's so many little components and they're all so finicky. This process was sped up in the video, but I easily spent 20 to 25 minutes fiddling around with hardware. And you can even see there, the lock was still crooked, which I had to fix later. Such a pain. But with that frustration out of the way, we can look at getting our door back in place. Now, first thing I had to do was move my impromptu doggy gate, AKA my toddler's pack and play, to get the door inside the door frame itself. Now, obviously a second set of hands here would be clutch, but if you don't, you can always use a pry bar, get the door into position, slide the pry bar under it, and give it a little bit of leverage with your foot to get it as high as you need. And in this case, I needed to flip to the more aggressive end of the pry bar, and that raised the door up enough that I could get the hinges in place and drive home those screws. And of course, after I got the door hung, I had to get inside and give those blinds a test run. And like I said, after I got that gem figured out, these blinds worked beautifully. The last step we had here was to take these little inserts to the inside of the door. You can see the trim has a little place where you can plug these in and give a nice seamless look to cover up all your screw holes. Following that, we could get to these really sweet afters. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this week's video. Thank you so much for following along. I am absolutely thrilled with how this all came together. It lets in a ton of light to this part of our house, which before was just a total shadow. Let's take one more quick look at the befores and the afters. Absolutely pumped with that transformation. Came together so well. Again, a huge shout out to Zapitat for partnering with me on this project and helping me bring this vision to life. So, so happy with how this all came together. If you guys are interested in doing this kind of project at your own place, I'll throw a link down below to Zappetite's website. Again, they've got a ton of options and definitely something to fit your situation. And that's going to do it for this week's video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll see you in the next one.